Hello, this is Miss Barnett, and I'm going to talk to you about chemical change. This is another example of chemical change, and we're going to talk about why it's an example of chemical change. Recently, I had a leak in pipes in my wall, and we had to cut the wall out, and um, then we discovered that there was a tiny hole that was spraying water, and over time had uh, made a huge mess in the wall. So we had to have some things replaced and we had to have some of the pipes replaced. So I thought this would be a great time to show you uh, how, how over time chemical change occurs. Now this is copper piping and uh, this is what they use in houses. I wanted to show you this is what new copper piping looks like. You can see it's pretty shiny um, especially where they cut it. So that's what new copper pipe looks like. Now it's kind of dirty because they don't really care it's going to go inside a wall, so they don't care if it's dirty on the outside, but you can see the inside is really shiny. Now these are the pipes that came out of my house. And you can see where they cut the pipe, it's nice and shiny. But on the outside of the pipe, there's all this green stuff. Now these lumpy things right here, that's actually uh, welding soldering. So that's, that's not anything that we're concerned with, but it's the green stuff. Um, one of the indications that a chemical change has occurred is a color change and that it creates a new substance. Well, what happens uh, with copper when it's exposed to water or air is that the oxygen molecules interact with the copper molecules and it actually creates a new substance, this oxidation. And that's what we call it, oxidation. Um, and it is actually uh, a, a little layer of the pipe that has been changed over time. And I'm going to show you uh, by scraping some of this off with the scissors really carefully. And underneath we will discover that indeed, look how nice and shiny that is underneath. That's the copper. It's just like where it's been cut. So all of this powdery stuff that's kind of greenish looking, that is actually the new substance that's been created. And we'll zoom in a little bit on this. This is called copper oxide. It's kind of greenish. It's not copper anymore. It's copper and oxygen combined to make copper oxide. This is what it looked like to begin with. And then you can see uh, the green layer that's been formed. When I scrape it off, there is the nice little shiny copper. Now, if I left this alone for a long period of time, this shiny part would become oxidized also uh, with, the, with the oxygen molecules uh, interacting with the copper. You can see inside that it's kind of green. That's because water went through these pipes and the oxygen, H2O, that's the chemical compound for water. The O, the oxygen, interacted with the copper molecules, created a new substance, and that is a chemical change. So in chemical change, a new substance is formed, and sometimes you can have a color change. Now it's very different than the color change of uh, like Kool-Aid and water, uh, or making lemonade, or making tea, or making coffee. Those are solutions. You still have little molecules running around uh, that are Kool-Aid molecules or uh, chocolate milk powder uh, in milk and that is a solution it's a fancy mixture that is not a chemical change but this is a chemical change because a new substance has been formed chemically at the atomic level we have a new substance so we've seen uh, the other video that had the vinegar and eggs and if you haven't you ought to um, we have production of a gas is uh, an indication of chemical change. Now we have color change and production of a new substance that is evidence of chemical change. So I hope you enjoyed this wonderful video and have a wonderful day and learn all about chemical change at Grisham Middle School.